basically this is what we're going to be talking about is, first of all, what story do you want to write? Who are you writing it to? What are the basic elements of that story? And then how are you going to plan out that story? Some various tools you can use to plan your story out. Um, how to finish a first draft, rewriting, getting an outside opinion, overall guiding principles to writing, how to get published, promoting your work and references, um, reference materials that you can use, final thoughts, and then discussion. First and foremost, you got to determine what you want to write about. You, you want to choose the, the one story that's just not going to let you alone. It's, now, what is your story? And one thing I should note that almost all book writing is storytelling, even if it's nonfiction. Elements of classic storytelling, what makes a story compelling? Number one, first and foremost, is unforgettable characters. Because if your audience doesn't give a damn about the characters, then it doesn't really matter what happens to them. Second of all, what makes your story unique? Is it a new twist on an old story? Or is it a new story, something that's way out of the common experience with elements in it that make it recognizable and familiar to a reader. And why are you qualified to tell it? You know, from what point of view are you telling it? What experiences do you have that you can bring to the storytelling? Just as important, and this is the problem with me forever, is what is not your story? This is where you really need to narrow it down. You have to avoid getting sidetracked. Yourself getting sidetracked as a writer, but also sidetracking your reader or overwhelming them with stuff that's not important. You can decide what elements of these fit your story, and then what ideas do you have that don't really serve this? You know, what's dead weight? Does an element fit naturally in what you're trying to do? Does it serve the genre that you're in? Does it confuse the story? And finally, is it interesting to anybody other than you, the writer? <laughs> <laughs> Next of all, who's your audience? Who are you writing to? Who can you interest in your story? Now, if you're telling a story with trans characters, or is it trans bi biography or autobiography, well, naturally, there's the community. But try and think about reaching beyond that if you can. This is important, especially when you're trying to cross over. What in your, what in your story can, your, can any audience already relate to? Um, if you can bring that common experience across in your storytelling, you're going to make it more compelling to the reader. Building blocks. Fleshing out the main elements. First and foremost, there's the characters. You've got your major characters and your minor characters. Um, and then under that, you've got plot lines and structure. Now, every story pretty much has, you know, you've got your main story, what we call in Hollywood the A story, and that is the action that carries through the entire length of the narrative. And then around that story, you've got one or more plot lines um, that serve that story, that intersect with it in places where you, some of the theme might be carried, um, elements of the genre, it all, they all work together. These plot lines all work together to integrate, uh, create a satisfying whole for the reader. If it's just like one narrative, it's just only one story, it's going to be less interesting and it's going to be less engaging. Now, characters. Every character has got strengths, weaknesses, goals, and obstacles to those goals. Each character also has some function that they bring to the story. Um, protagonist, or the hero or heroine, and antagonist, which in many stories is like the villain. Then you've got uh, friends, sidekicks, um, helpers. Every character needs to serve some kind of function to the story. Okay. Now, character arc. Character arc describes the journey that character goes through. Um, and this is especially true of the protagonist. Quite often it's that character arc. We show a character 
we get the readers interested in that character. We also just reveal that character's weaknesses. The character has a goal. These characters' weaknesses or shortcomings or character defects, whatever you want to call, impede the character from reaching their goal. So in order to reach that goal, they need to overcome these weaknesses. And as they move through the story by interacting with other characters, which are exposed through the subplots, they start to get what they need to overcome these weaknesses till they finally till they get to the point where they can achieve that goal. Now, antagonists, and this is really important for building three-dimensional characters. An antagonist is not necessarily just a mustache twirling villain. Antagonists are merely characters with goals that conflict with your main character. That doesn't necessarily make them a bad person. And you have to remember that your antagonist characters are just, everything they do is for a good reason in their own minds. They can justify it. It makes sense, to, at least to them. Plot lines. Establish the A story and then the underlying stories. When these stories go through like various turning points, there are catalysts for change. Because once again, what, what propels a story forward is some kind of change, something that causes the character to have to do something differently. These catalysts are trials, barriers, complications, and reversals. A trial is just something that um, hinders a, a character's progress towards a goal. And it just means they have to work harder. Now a barrier is where something comes up and they can't work harder, so they need to change direction and try something different to get towards that goal. Complications is where something happens and the reader knows that, oh, this is going to lead to trouble down the line. I don't know where it's going to happen, but somewhere down the line, it's going to, it's going to cause a problem. And then finally, reversal is a change that's so big, it throws the story in a 180 degree direction completely. Catalysts can be new characters that are introduced or major changes with existing characters. Uh, something that happens at work. You get a job, you lose a job. Changes in health, um, getting a lot of money or losing a lot of money, scandals, etc. These are, the, these are all of the things that can serve as catalysts to be a trial, barrier, complication, or a reversal. Okay, now, advancing the plot lines. Characters' goals and catalysts motivate action. Characters motivated by their goal, and then a catalyst will happen or something and it forces them to do something else. These are story beats. What, an action that is taken, a decision that is made, um, a catalyst comes into play. These are story beats, and each story beat drives the um, story ahead another step. Everything should serve at least one purpose, but preferably more. Every scene you write, every chapter, sometimes every paragraph, every dialogue, something, it should have serve at least one purpose. And by I mean purpose, I mean it should advance one or more storylines. Oh, finally, foreshadowing and payoff. What is it and why use it? Foreshadowing is when you show the reader or the audience something early on and then later on you bring it back and either for some kind of a satisfying payoff um, or at least you've shown it enough times so that when you do bring it out later, it doesn't seem like some, you know, Hollywood kind of like, oh, bullshit, you know, kind of thing. Okay, other elements. And this is early on in your story planning, genre. What kind of story are you telling? Is it a drama? Is it a comedy? Is it a horror, etc.? Now, you can certainly mix genres. I mean, everybody's, you know, there's the romantic comedy, the dramedy, uh, but generally, Stories will have one genre and then they have elements of something else. Now, theme is a simple, universal, underlying message. Theme is like what your story is about. 
something like, you know, the underdog, uh, underdog wins, or somebody that's got character defects, they redeem themselves. It's something that kind of carries through the whole story, that flavors the entire story. That would be the theme. A spine, this is a, kind of an advanced writing concept, it takes all of your plot, all of this, the plot lines, and the character arcs, and the theme, and the moral of the story, it, it brings it all together into the spine. The spine is truly what the story is really all about. In the case of Tootsie, we got Michael Dorsey, an actor that nobody will work with, and he doesn't know how to have a relationship with a woman. He doesn't know how to treat a woman right. But by becoming Dorothy Michaels for a t an entire television season, he's forced to see life through a woman's eyes. He is forced to try to relate to a woman as a person instead of a sex object. The, the spine of Tootsie is becoming a better man by being a woman. That is the single underlying concept. That is the spine of that story. Now, the more you plan up front, the less rewriting you've got to do later. What is the main story, then what are all the little sub-stories underneath? Once you've got that, then you decide how these stories should be logically broken up. Where should all your different plot lines be broken up in beginning, middle, and end? Everything has three acts. Stories, scenes, and conversations. When you're planning, though, you want to talk, write top down, starting with very broad strokes, and then work down to the, the more minute details. The more you plan it out like that, the less, the, uh, the less rewriting you're going to have to do. Very important, do not get lost in minutia. When you're planning something, list just enough to guide you. The minutia will fill itself in after you've done. Remember, this is planning. This is not writing. You list just enough details um, in your story plan to guide you. Now, there are various tools that you can use to actually do the planning. I'm going to show you just a few that are used here. Story outline is the most common. Setup, development, and conclusion. And then under that, you've got a chapter or a group of chapters. Um, and then under each of those, there'll be a story beat and an element of the story beat. And you do this to whatever level of detail you need to fully flesh out your story. <coughs> if you plan out a story like this, the chances that you're going to write yourself into a corner or you know, get totally lost in your writing, you've minimized it greatly. Another tool that people like to use is mini synopsis. If you know your chapters pretty much ahead of time, what you, what you want each chapter or section of the book to serve, you write a little mini synopsis for each one. And then for each chapter, write no more than a page describing the story beat in both the main and whatever subplots advance in that chapter, catalysts and whatever elements that are contributing to the theme or to the spine or to the genre and so forth characters involved and the changes in the arc in that chapter. Make sure that you've got continuity in your beginnings, middle, and endings. You don't want to get lost in either your plot or your subplots. And then there are specialty tools. This is my favorite one, the plot matrix. The plot matrix uses a grid to show all of the storylines and the relationship between them. Each storyline, the main plot and all the subplots, gets their own column, and then each row shows an important turning point for each of the storylines that kicks it off into a new direction. The main plot, or A story, is that Michael Dorsey needs money to produce a play, but he, nobody will work with him, so he's forced to become Dorothy Michaels in order to earn that money. The first subplot, or the B story, is the romance that develops in be between Dorothy Michaels and Julie. The second subplot is the relationship between Julie's father, Wes, and Dorothy Michaels. The third subplot is the relationship between Michael Dorsey and his friend, actress Sandy. And finally, the fourth subplot is the relationship between Julie and the show's womanizing director, Ron. Let's take a look at these in more detail. The first major turning point, really the catalyst for the entire story, is when Michael Dorsey learns that nobody will hire him. Okay, thanks. I'm going to raise $8,000, and I'm going to do Jeff's play. 
Michael? No one will hire you. Oh, yeah? Now, if he doesn't have his character shortcomings, if he can get along with people, then there's no need to become Dorothy Michaels and we don't have a movie. The second turning point is when he is actually hired as Dorothy Michaels. But there's something about her that bothers me. Does it bother you? I like it. We'll send the contracts over to George today, Miss Michaels. He starts to have some success, but then he eventually wants to go back to being Michael Dorsey. Unfortunately, the show picks up his option, and he can't. He's forced to continue working as Dorothy Michaels. You're a breakthrough lady for us. We're picking up your option. You'll be with us another year. Congratulations. Oh, come on, Michael. Okay, we ain't talking about get you out of it. It's, we can't get you out of it. There's no way out of it. It's a one-way option. There's. Of course, it's not just bad enough that he's stuck playing Dorothy Michaels. His personal life becomes hell because he's stuck in this role. If you could just see me out of these clothes, I... No, 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 no. Oh! Ah! He becomes desperate to quit. It becomes so desperate that that leads to the unmasking scene where he reveals to the world that he uh, is not really Dorothy Michaels, but instead a man who's been playing Dorothy Michaels. And finally, there is the resolution of that story, which he's got the money he needs, and so he's able to produce his play. That is the A story. The B story is the romance with Julie, the lead actress on the soap opera. When Michael took this job not intending to meet anybody. He just wants to earn money. But then he meets Julie, who helps him when he drops some pages of the script. Hi. And you can tell by the look that he gives her that trouble will be brewing. But because he is portraying himself as Dorothy Michaels, he can't go after her. He's, so he's forced to become her friend. He becomes her friend, and that relationship develops, and he becomes closer and closer. Can I answer it as if the question took you by complete surprise? What do you mean? I'm going to ask you a question. You just answer it. Okay. Why do you drink so much? To, and he gets to a point where it's like they're both attracted to each other, but Julie believes that this makes would make her a lesbian, no, no, not no. knowing that her friend Dorothy is really a guy. And finally, there is the unmasking, and eventually uh, it ends up with them becoming friends. The next subplot is a relationship, a friendship that turns into a one-sided romance between Julie's father, Wes, and Dorothy Michaels. Of course, Wes doesn't know that Dorothy Michaels is really a man, uh, but he's become smitten with her, eventually proposes, which freaks out Michael Dorsey even more, oh. and then there becomes the unmasking. But fortunately, Wes and Michael are able to become friends in the very end. Then there's the Michael-Sandy relationship. Sandy is an actress who Michael works with as Sandy's drama coach. And in addition, he coaches her for the role Dorothy Michaels actually gets. Michael can't tell her about it because she's already somewhat neurotic to begin with. And if he tells her that a man got the role that she'd wanted, it would probably send her over the edge. In addition to that, he gets caught almost trying on one of her dresses. She walks in, sees him taking his clothes off, and he has to pretend that he wants to seduce her forcing him to pretend to be in a relationship with her. And eventually, though, the truth comes out that he's actually in love with another woman. However, in the very end, uh, they manage to salvage a friendship and she ends up doing the play with him. The final subplot is the relationship between Julie and the soap's director, Ron. Ron's a womanizer. He treats Julie terribly. But Julie's relationship with Dorothy gives her the courage to stand up to Ron and to eventually break off their relationship. This plot matrix shows just how strongly all of these various storylines intersect with each other. For instance, it's on the weekend visit up at Julie's father's farm that his feelings for Julie become really strong and also when she noticed a lot of interest from Wes and that's when uh, Michael decides, okay, he's had enough of this, but then he 
learns that he can't quit. And all of these happen within a scene of each other. And then during the crisis, everything happens within one scene of each other. For, for we got uh, the lesbian panic, West proposing marriage, and then I'm in love with another woman. These are all one scene apart. And you know, they're all beautifully integrated right here. And, and, and a well-integrated story has all these things tying together. It makes for a much stronger story. Basically, I did have the same impulse. Don't the conclusions about that impulse. That impulse is a good impulse, Julie. If you could just see me out of these clothes, I... No, 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 no. I know this is kind of quick, but that's how I am. Never did believe in not getting down to it. Oh! I'm going to tell you the truth, Sandy. I'm in love with another woman. I don't care what time it is, man. You've got 10 days to get me off this show. I've had it. It's possible. And that's when he is finally pushed to the level where he has to do something drastic. I'm Edward Kimberly, the reckless brother of my sister, Anthony. <laughs> who has finally vindicated his sister's good name. I'm Edward Kimberly. And strong enough to be the woman. Now it's in this unmasking scene that all of the plot lines very strongly converge, and all of those stories go through a drastic change. For instance, the friendship with Julie is clearly off. <coughs> Wes no longer wants to marry uh, Dorothy Michaels, and Sandy realizes what uh, Michael's been up to all along. Looks pretty bad for him at this point. And yet, in the, the last section, in the resolution, things work their way out. Sandy ends up doing the play with Michael. Michael meets with Wes and reconciles with him. The truth is, you're okay, company. Does Julie ever mention me? And most importantly, Michael goes and reconciles with Julie. I just did it for the work. I didn't mean to hurt anybody, especially you. Look, you don't know me from Adam, but I was a better man with you as a woman than I ever was with a woman as a man. You know what I mean? Will you loan me that little yellow outfit? And they end up friends, and it looks like a romance might actually be possible. That's the plot matrix, and this shows how beautifully structured Tootsie is, and also how useful a plot matrix is in plotting out a story so that you've got multiple storylines like this that you can keep them very tightly integrated. This concludes part one of Christine Beatty's writing seminar. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to rate this video and also to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you once again. Bye-bye.